Well, we are just two days away from the FDA public meeting to consider whether to issue an emergency use authorization for the yeah. Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. As promised today, the FDA released the data that will be used that is very central to that decision. And our Dr. Frank Lee George has been digging through it. He's back with a closer look at a, a really important part of this, Doc, and that's the potential side effects that have turned up thus far. Exactly, Kim and Devin. So most of the vaccines we get trigger a few minor side effects from a sore arm to some fatigue or a fever. But Pfizer's data finds the COVID-19 vaccine did trigger some predictable side effects in most participants. And that is something people should definitely be prepared for. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site, particularly after the second dose of the vaccine. Nearly 78% of those aged 18 to 55 reported pain after dose two. 66% of participants over 55 experienced that symptom as well. About half reported the pain was mild. Redness and swelling were similar for both age groups, but they occurred in only about 4 to 7% of participants. In general, participants under 55 had more frequent and more severe side effects, especially after the second dose. In the younger age group after the second dose, 59% reported fatigue, nearly 52% experienced a headache, 37% reported muscle pain, and 35% had chills. Less common symptoms included fever, vomiting, diarrhea, or joint pain. In those over 55, after the second dose, over 50% reported fatigue, 39% suffered a headache, nearly 29% had muscle pain, and nearly 23% reported chills. In all ages, most of the symptoms occurred in the first day or two after receiving the vaccine, and most often lasted about a day. Swollen lymph nodes were also reported more often in people who received the vaccine compared to those who received the placebo. Now, there were four cases of Bell's palsy that occurred in the group that received the vaccine. Bell's palsy is a condition that causes temporary weakness or paralysis of certain muscles in the face. It is not clear that there is a connection to the vaccine, but the FDA will recommend surveillance for that side effect, in particular, if the vaccine is authorized. Now, Frank, this uh, vaccine works very differently from, say, the flu vaccine, so I ask this question advisedly, knowing that they, they don't work the same way. Uh, but do we have any idea why those side effects come in that first day or two than we would say typically see with, say, a flu well, shot? Yeah, Devin, well, it's thought to be from an immune inflammatory reaction to both the mRNA, that's the genetic material in the vaccine, mm. as well as the lipid material that's used to get that genetic material into cells. This is, as you mentioned, a very different type of vaccine. So, of course, it's not surprising that we're seeing yeah. different reactions. It would seem to, to be in store with that. All right, Doc.